Hi guys, Larry Powell II here with another video. This time I'm showing you um, all of my knives and swords, hopefully. Uh, there may still be some that I haven't found yet, but I hope I've got them all here. Anyway, so this is my small, smaller knives. And these ones here at the front, I actually bought like 60 um, knives in five varieties, 12 of each and took to a men's retreat one year and gave to all the kids that were there. I gave each one of them a knife and then these were the four that were left. And so that's where these came from. These two here, these two blue ones, and then this one here, and I've got somebody assisting me. You'll see their hand, but they didn't want to be on video other than their hand. But anyway, so this is Frost Cutlery. And I, so I've got two of the black ones and two of the blue ones. And so I'm going to have my assistant put those uh, in the bag that I keep my knives in when they're not out showing off to somebody. And then so next is a uh, lock open blade that I got. Actually, I believe my dad got this for me from uh, my birthday or for Christmas a couple of years ago. Anyway, it's got a partial serrated and then... The rest of it's regular and it's got the little thumb thing so that you can open it one handed. You, have, you can't really close it one handed, but you can open it one handed. Oh, that's Anyways, what that's for. Yes, that's what that's for. All right, and then this is another one that has that. But this one you can actually close one handed because you can push that down with your thumb and it's got the belt clip. It's seen a little bit of action, so it's kind of. Got some of the paint coming off of it there, but it's still a good working order. And then this is by Sheffield, and it's got several blades, and it's got the belt clip as well. But it looks, it's like all stainless steel. And it's got my initials engraved, engraved on it. <laughs> I don't remember who gave me that one. And then here's another one that uses your thumb to open and close. Although it looks like it's piece that locks it open is missing. So it actually opens further than it's supposed to. So that one I may have to figure out what happened to the piece and try to fix it. And then here is another one. Do you want me to put the broken ones in the side pocket? That's fine. Alright, and then here is another one that locks open. And it's half serrated and half straight edge. And it has this little area here. I don't remember what that's called. But that's another one that I've got. Oop. Bumped the camera. And then here is another one with the little... that I think that's so you can push it open one-handed. And so it's got... Most of these have got a decent edge. And then you just push this little bar here to close it. And I forget what this is called on the back of it there. And then here is another one that will open one handed. A lot of these I got from gun and knife shows and then some I got from knife swaps at uh, men's retreat. All the men and, and, and the sons that came with their fathers would all bring like knives and then just do like a covering it up so that you can't see what you're getting and then just do life swaps that way anyway so there's another one that i got and it has like a curved more of a curved blade and stuff and a curved handle i kind of like that design and then here is the next one and it's a buck knife, USA, with the uh, camouflage handle, nice and it's got the clip for the belt, and I, it's got the thumb thing for opening it easy. None of what I really like. Of course, I like all of my knives. That's why I collect them, because I like knives and swords. I think they're fascinating and stuff. And so here's another one that's similar to that one I had earlier that opens one-handed and, and then it closes.
And then here is another, oops, I had that backwards. An SAR knife from Frost, Frost Cutlery. And so it's really cool. I like it. And then here is another blue one. And it's a law enforcement Frost Cutlery. Which I think is interesting. And it's got a darkened blade. And here is another one. And this one would actually be something that I think Pirate Stacker would really like. Because, matter of fact, I may send that to him. You only said that side. Because it's got the the school and pirates type stuff on the... Yeah, I think I'm going to keep that out. I'll set it over here. And see if I can get him to send me his email address, or his mailing address, and I'll send that to him. the blade still. Oh, yeah, I forgot to show the blade on that. It's a partial serrated and then straight. But I just think that's really cool. It looks similar to his uh, channel uh, logo. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set that aside and send that to Pirate Stacker. Okay, and here's another one I like, really like. And it locks open. And it's a little short blade. And it's got... I like it's missing neat. a metal piece. Oh, yeah, on this side, yeah. This piece is missing on this side of it. I've had it for a long time, though. Now, the next question is... Yeah, there we go. That's kind of dangerous. Well, normally you can do it with one hand with your thumb, but my thumb's not real strong anymore. Because of carpal tunnel, I can't use my thumb as well. And then here is the Swiss Army knife with a whole bunch of... And I'm not going to open all the attachments and stuff. It's got, like, a screwdriver corkscrew and you want me to open the blades all the different blades and then here's a little little pair of tweezers the toothpick is missing though I can yeah you can, I can if, if you can open the blades that's fine um okay so. yeah the ones on the other side yeah i ain't gonna worry about the it may be hard to open yeah there you go yeah there's the there's one of the, the blades. And then it's got like a... This is like a bottle opener type open thing. open every single attachment? And then this has a... Here, I can do it. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, don't remember what that's called, but it... I think it's another little is it attachment. Is like fishing? Uh, possibly. And then here's a pair of scissors. Little miniature scissors there. And then the last one that I haven't opened yet is a saw blade. Oh, there's one more blade there. There, I can get it. No, wait, that's part of the scissors, I think, actually. Mm -mm. Oh, there's some there. Oh, okay. Past the scissors, I'm pretty sure. Is there another blade there? Yeah, there's some there. Let me see if I can get it. Got it. Oh, uh, okay. So, that's hard to get. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, it's another, like, I'm yeah. not sure what that's called. <laughs> anyway, it's another little blade might there. might be for fishing, I don't know. I it doesn't really have any, it doesn't really have any edge. But it's got, like, a thing on the end there for, I'm put, not sure exactly I'll, what it's for. I'll go and put these up and get the other side. Uh, well, the other side is just the corkscrew and the, and the screwdriver, but you can okay. see those without opening it. So, yeah, uh, we'll just go ahead and close those up, and I think that's everything. That's no, on. there's a few things there. Oh, there's more than just the corkscrew and the screwdriver? Yeah, there's a miniature knife. I gotta get the corkscrew. I have to get the other two. Oh, I didn't realize there was more on the back. Oh. Well, huh. That one's got a whole lot more attachments than the one, uh, than my other Swiss Army. There's three weird ones. You might have to. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, there's the screwdriver, the corkscrew, and then three like knife things. This is like a, huh? Well, this one here is just like a regular little miniature blade, I think. Like a knife. Right there. Although it doesn't have an edge, so I'm not exactly mm -hmm. sure what that's for. 
And then this. Oh, I think that's I'm the thing. I'm not sure that, what that's for either. That's, that's get under your uh, fingernail and push and grade it. Yeah. That's oh, okay. Yeah, file. that's okay. So that's a a fingernail file type of thing. And to get under your nail, yeah. Okay. And then this is like an awl thing or whatever I think they call it. It's for like uh, doing uh, leather work, I think. I think that's what that's... I'm not 100% sure on that. Anyway, it's just it got a lot of neat attachments and stuff. Uh, what will we do this one? Oh, well, I was kind of saving that one, but okay. Yeah, this is a butterfly knife, which I really like. Looks like it's kind of gotten a little bit dusty there. Oh, I thought that was... A, oh, it came through the circles. came through the little circles in the handle. It looked handle. like a pattern. But yeah, you just squeeze that together and then clip it, and that way it doesn't close up on you on accident. But it's actually a nice little, nice little blade, stainless steel. I mean, I'm not talented enough to, to do like any fancy tricks with it, like some people, but it's still cool to have a little butterfly knife. And then here is one that's got a wooden handle. Oh, that's pretty. And it's really cool. Okay. What about we go and do the other one? And then here is my other Swiss Army knife, but you guys have seen it in several videos because that's what I used to open my uh, coin roll hunts uh, with. It's got a saw blade there, and then there's a small blade right here. If I can get, I can't get hold of it. My fingernail's not long enough, I guess, or something. Mm. Here, let me do it. Be careful. I'm gonna put this. Nah, I don't do that one. I might break a fingernail. Yeah, it's too... Yeah, no, those are, like, in there. It must be, like, rusted or something. Well, yeah, I hardly ever use those blades. The only ring thing I use is this steel right here to slide in to open the rolls with. That's pretty much all I use that for. I'll keep that out because that's the one. And then this one. And then this is one I carry with me. It's an old-timer knife. I've had it since I was a little kid. And it's been sharpened many, many times. It doesn't really have an edge right now. I need to sharpen it again. But yeah, I've had this for many, many years. Well, you have a sharpener? Uh, somewhere. I'll have to find it. But yeah, that's an old timer brand, which is like. Can you find it? Let me know. That's one of my first knives I got. Was that old timer? I got like a big hacking knife that I need to sharpen. Okay, cool. And then this has like three blades. And this one I actually got fairly recently. Ah, come on. There we go. You need help. Let's see. And it says Stockman Green Bone. Made in Germany. Huh. Very cool. But yeah, I see it's got the three blades there. This is the longest one. I guess that's the way you normally open them, like that, to show off the blades. And I think it says, yeah, it says Puma on that little gold thing there. So that's the brand of this one. But it's made by the Stockman Greenbone Company from Germany. Anyway, so that's one of my knives that I've gotten recently. <gasps> And uh, see, and this one is an Uncle Henry knife, which is an older company. It's been around for a long time. And it's got three blades, but I'm not going to open all of them. I'll just sh show you the knife. And then this one has a little chain, so you can put it on your keychain. And it's just a little small blade that locks open, which is really cool. And then here's another one that's small, but it has a thumb thing, and it's still serrated, and part of it not serrated. And then here's another keychain one with a red bill. That's pretty nice. And it locks open as well. Yeah, I like these little keychain knives. They're little... What would you keep one on you? Like, you could... Well, yeah, I, I just carry one knife on me. Just that old timer mm -hmm. and then here's the one that's made in china what was that sound uh don't know uh, 
And then here is one. That's kind of rusty, but it's got. A, I don't remember what. Yeah, oh, that, that and one of the blades is broke off on this one. That isn't gonna open. Yeah, it, yeah. This is one. Just a yeah. fun little knife I used to. I've had for a long time. And here is like a small Swiss Army knife. It's just got two little blades. Well, one that's a. Bl this is an actual blade, and this that's is like a fingernail file type. Yeah, there's the emery board side and that's if you want to get it precise yeah so it's just a little small one and it does have a little oh. pair of tweezers also the toothpick is missing seems like these are always the mine toothpick is have, always missing mine might have that this act well actually this this one that i use for opening coin rolls does still have the toothpick it's i think the only one of mine that still has the toothpick with it i need to check my switch army knife if i have that Oh, hopefully somebody answers the phone. All right, and then this is another real nice one. And I'm not going to open all the blades, but I'll just show it to you. I can open a few for them. Well, okay. I was just... Cause, this video is going to be one of your longer ones. Yeah, it's like 16 minutes already. <laughs> that's why I was going to not open all the blades, but if you want to, that's cool. All right, cool. So yeah, this says Western USA on it. A stainless steel. And it's got the three blades, which is really cool. I believe that's the last one with the kind of the blade like that. It don't have any lock open features. And then this one here has two blades. And then it's got like a bone handle. Which is pretty cool. It looks like antler. Oh, well, yeah, it might be. Deer antler, elk antler, or something like that. Yeah, that's a possibility. Big, and then here is another one that locks open. It's kind of old and worn and beat up. But still a cool knife. There's that. And then this one has a little case that comes in, that came with it. And this one, I actually, this is actually one of the things I got for Christmas this year from my mom guidesman and it's really cool i really like it but yeah it comes with its own sheath which is really cool and then this is another one that i like it's got a little image of horses and when you move it it looks like the picture is moving a little bit it doesn't work as well as it's supposed to. But yeah, it looks like the horses are moving a little bit when you move the knife. And then it's got the blade that locks open. And then there's like a little jewel thing right there in the handle. That is just something as part of a wildlife uh, locking blade pocket knife collection. Only it's horses instead of like deer or something. They probably do deer and coyote ones too. Yeah, they do. I just this is I just happened to want the horse one at the time I got this, so that's what I got. But yeah, I think there was like three or four different designs that you could choose from when I bought this. And then here is my next one, and it has a bald eagle, a couple of bald eagles on the blade. And it says it's from Wild Outdoor. And it's even got a picture of eagles on the handle. And the blade has it on both sides. Stainless steel made in China. That's a pretty nice knife. And it's and a that, that looks like pretty Island. sturdy knife and everything. That looks like real antler. Yeah, it does. Anyway, I really like it. It came in this little box with the eagle on the front of on the top of it. Which is pretty cool. Okay. Okay. And then Which next, do the small one first? yeah, next one comes in this little case right here, Coleman Cherokee, and it has a regular like blade knife called Redhead. And anyway, so it looks really cool. Well, it goes. I'm back gonna in. put it back in there. Yeah. Well, yeah. Anyway, so it slides back in there like that. And then this is the other one that was in that same 
case and it's got a saw blade on one end and a long like filleting knife type blade on the other end and you just push the little thing to release it on each each one of them has its own locking thing so that you don't cut yourself with it closing accidentally and then of course it goes in this goes in this case with the other one and then you just velcro shut and you got a thing to put your belt through so that you can carry the two of them together as one pocket knife kind of anyway so I didn't that's realize just there was something on the back oh yeah it's just gonna you where you can down. slide the uh you um all right um, and then this you guys have seen this in a, in a lot of my um videos as well this is my samurai sword letter opener of course you've seen it lots of times but this is the stand that it comes with it that you you just set it on here and then just like snap it in there and then that sits it's designed to sit on your desk like that Oop. Oh, I'll, fix it. I'll fix it and then this you've also seen this this gold one but it, it also has a silver and a pewter or bronze and this is what it comes on is this little stand here like this but you've seen this letter opener in my videos as well but yeah they're all pretty similar in style I really like this set. We should probably take them out before we put it over there. Well, I think those, it, it should stay. Okay. As long as we're careful sliding it back. Okay. Uh, probably this one. Okay, yeah, we'll do that one next. Okay. And this is a buck knife here, which is a brand I really like because of how good their knives are. And it's got a nice handle and blade and everything. There's that. Alright. And then we'll look at this one. This one's called a knife a lifesaver knife. Hey, doesn't this come with a stand? Uh those two don't know. Just that one set comes with a stand. And see this has got like a edge on both sides. Which I don't know, that may be designed for throwing. It is a throwing knife. It's, if it's two-sided, it's throwing. Okay. But anyway, I just got it because it was really cool looking. And it's called a life-saving knife on Wait, the... Can't you stick on the back? Do what now? You see that? It says that you... It, it looks like you can stick on the back. Oh, well, yeah. I just put... Well, not on the back, but I mean... That's just putting it in there without putting it in the sheath. Oh. Like that. That way you can draw it out quicker or something, maybe, or something. I'm no, not I think sure. It's just for show. Yeah, it's just because there's not a way to put it back there. But, yeah, anyway, anyway so I think it's sort of, yeah. But it's a pretty cool knife. Alright, and next we've got this. By Winchester brand. And it has a nice blade. And it says Winchester on it, and it's got the fish hook thing there. But it's got a nice grip. Which I really like the, the Winchester brand. Which, a lot of these, as I said at the beginning, I purchased at gun and knife shows whenever I was younger and still working and able to get around better before I got to where I couldn't hardly walk because I haven't been able to go to gun and knife shows since I got to where I couldn't walk anymore. All right, and this is a deep sea diver's knife. And it's pretty cool. And it has a little plastic sheath. And it's got the fish hook and then a saw on the back and Maybe then the regular blade. Or something. Yeah. And then it's got the plastic handle. And then in the case, the scabbard is plastic. As, oops, I got it backwards. The scabbard is plastic as well. And it's got the little place where you can run your belt through. And, and then it's got other places where you can like tie it, make it stay to your leg better. That way you don't have to worry about losing it while you're 
doing that sky or deep sea diving. Anyway, I just thought it was a cool knife, so that's why I bought it. Which is why I bought most of these. And then these two here is like a set. There's like a longer knife and a shorter knife. Doesn't that go with it? Uh, it's no, it's a different, different, it different a, brand. It looks like it's a, it looks similar. Um, yeah, the design is different. But yeah, these two have a uh, really cool design on the on the blade. And then it's got like the dragon on the handle here and here. You can show them how you weld it. Yeah, it's got the nice grip. And then of course, uh, my assistant was showing you the other one. It's got a, it's shorter, but it's got an interesting shape to the blade. And it's got the dragon on the handle in both places again. Really oh, and there's a dragon on the bottom of the scaber too. Yeah. I didn't realize that. On the other end of the scaber down here, there's also a dragon. For some reason, that one doesn't stay in as well as the other one. Maybe I've got it backwards. Yeah, okay, that's what I had it in there backwards. All right, mm -hmm. and then see, there's a really cool sign design on the... Do you know where that machete is? Um... I, I gave it to you when I was trying to... It's right there against the uh, dresser on the other side of the wooden hand, wooden sword. It's off. Yeah, just past the wooden sword. Found it. Thank you. Here, I'll give you these to put in the bag and then I'll go on to the next one. And this one, my assistant already took out of the scabber. It's another... And this one has an interesting design oh, as well. Oh, that down? Oh, yeah, it looks like we didn't... We tried to wipe all the dust off of the, these before we started, but we missed that one. And it's got a little really cool thing on the end of the right there at the end of the of the blade, where it goes into the handle. And then of course there's like dragons on the right there and on this part of the. And then I really like this design on the side of the scabbard, and then it's got dragons on the handle there as well. Anyway, it's just an overall really cool uh, sword. And I think I put it in backwards. Yep, there we go. Alright, and then this is kind of rusty, but it's a, a pretty good sized machete, as you can see. And a Gavillion de Incoma Colombia is what it says on the. I'm not sure what that means when it's got like a bird in flight there. But yeah, it's a long machete. And then it's got a little thing, like tag thing on the blade. It looks like it is written in Spanish, maybe. Although I don't know what that says. Other than Manizales, Colombia is about the only... Anyway, so it's just a nice machete, but I've... Had it for a long time, and for a while it was outside and kind of got a little bit of rust on it. I need to clean the blade up good. Yeah. Anyway, it's a really long machete, nice one. And then here is a machete that is in better shape, and it has a little sheet that comes with that came with it. But yeah, I like this one. It's got the darkened blade and the except for where the edge is. And it's got a black handle. Anyway, it's a really nice, cool machete. Mm -hmm. You should save these for last or some of the best. Okay. Oh, yeah, put it over there so we don't forget which ones we have done and which ones we haven't. And then this is a like a policeman's baton, but it's got an interesting little feature. You unscrew the handle and it has a blade inside it. And then you can turn the blade around and screw the handle back on. And then it's like a little spear type deal with the long, so you can use it too as a spear. 
Anyway, so I thought that was really cool, so I got that. And again, a nice show. I'll give you this. Oh, okay. I, I want to go ahead and put this up here so it doesn't away in the swords. Ah. Yeah, the swords are kind of big. Anyway, so I'll give you that. And then we'll look at these. And then we'll go to the big swords. And this is called a hunting knife, but it's just a, like a ceremonial. It's got a, a little jewel on the end of the hand. I wish I didn't fit in there. And then, the, yeah, I know it's not supposed to. Neither is the other machete that we've already looked at. Anyway, so, and then so when you pull this open, it's got little designs on the handle. I mean, on the blade. And uh, there, on both sides. And this is a really cool sh uh, scabber. And that's another one I picked up at the Gun and Knife Show. And this little box is what it came in. And it's even got a picture of the knife on the box. Well, I'll give you that. I can never leave its uh, thing. Yeah, the, and then this one come in this box here, and it has a, a scabbard with the blue in the back of it. You can see, and it's got a nice little safety feature on it. Well, and also it's got a chain that connects the. I mean, it does have a little clip that you can undo to disconnect it if you need to. Like that. But that clip is to keep the blade and the scabbard together. And then you, when you take the... And it's got this little... See, it says Custer's Last Stand on there. And it's got that neat picture on the blade. And that's what the handle looks like. But something cool that this one has is when you push it in, it locks and you can't open it unless you push this in. And that's what releases the blade. Because see, there's that thing that's opening, moving in and out right there. That clips and that keeps the blade from coming open. And so that's just a neat little feature that came with it. And I'm going to reclip this back on here real oh, quick. Let it unclip. I took it off. There we go. And then that just sits back in here. And then you just lay that over like that. And I'll let you close the box. And then we'll go on to the next. All right, oops, sorry about moving the camera there. This is a cane. We're done with the box. With the dragon head and then it unscrews. And then it has a, a blade inside. Maybe you could do like a view where you it can see it, where they can see how long it is. Um, yeah. Uh, that's a bad angled. Yeah, it doesn't really. It's hard to show the whole blade. I mean, they can tell how long it is by how far I have to move the to get. But yeah, this is a regular full full size walking stick. With a blade in it. All right, and let's do the practice sword next. This is a uh, like for uh, practicing, practicing like sword fighting. It's just a uh, made out of wood, and it, I mean I've done a few dings and stuff where I practiced with a friend a few years ago when I was still able to walk and stand for for a little bit longer than I can now. Which that's one reason why I've been doing this new weight loss, weight loss and lifestyle change, is because I want to be able to get out and do stuff. Anyway, so this is just a practice sword made out of wood. It's definitely good and sturdy. Wax on with it. You wouldn't, yeah, you would not want to get hit with it. And then here is the next sword, which it's a nice long blade here. I'm gonna put these back over here. Well, hang on. Oh, okay. 
Anyway, so this is nice and long. And then it's got the handle here. think yeah that's part of the scabber that did not stay with the scabber <laughs> yeah some of these I need to re-glue the uh, end pieces on them let's see is that the way it goes or is it this way yeah. mm. alright Let me see if I can fix this real quick. If not, I can always work on it another time. Mm, bear with me for a second, guys. Mm. Ah, there we go. Now I got it back on there. Anyway, so it's got like uh, a little bit of fur around the end of that, that end of the scabber. And then, there's, of course, there's a dragon on this. Yeah, don't, you don't have to open them before you hand them to me. I know. I just don't want you to take you. That's a nice blade there. Yeah, I wanted to do that one last. Well, it can that's my, last still. It's just hard That's to my favorite one. I want to... I'm not going to have any strength in there. So. Anyway, and see this uh, handle has uh, fur on it too. But yeah, this is a nice long blade. I don't know the exact measurements without measuring it. Well, we're almost done. Well, we're saving us for a uh, second to last, right? Yeah. There we go. All right. Here's that one. Yes, I'll put this over here. Okay. All right. And so here is the next one. It has a nice, interesting little blade, and, and there's a nice long scaber that comes with I'm it. I'm going to put it back in the thing. Yeah, please do. Because that one, I don't want anything to happen to it. Now. It's my favorite. I'll you got to turn, turn, the, turn the scaber. There you go. Okay, I'm putting that back in. Yep. That's fine. Just leave it like that and just lay it back on the table for now. Okay. Or, uh, or yeah, I guess you can. Because that one doesn't go back there anyway when we're done. Yeah. Because I keep that one over there, remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one, the the handle is a little bit loose right here. Oh, there it was. I just needed to screw it in. It was not screwed all the way in for some reason. There we go. Anyway, so this is a nice little piece that I've had for uh, quite a while. And it's got that little interesting design there on the, and then this is the pommel of it. Mm, hey, that's a two-sided. Yep. Anyway, it's just another one of the little cool pieces I picked up at a gun and knife show years ago. And the snap's closed. There's that. What is the big sword next? The heavy one. Yeah, the heavy, heavy one. Yeah, we'll do that one next. Okay. Yeah, there we go. All right, now this is my heaviest sword. And the, it's got this big, huge pommel on the end of it. And then there's a, like a wing pegasus on there. And then it's got the Medusa head on that side. And then it's got a cool design there. And there. The and big... then some more designs on that. And yeah, there's a spot where I need to re-glue it right there. Where the wrapping's coming unglued from it. But I, got, I can fix that. Anyway, that's the end of the scabber. And then this is what the blade looks like. It's got this nice design on it. And it's the same design on the other side of the blade. 
But yeah, this is definitely my heaviest sword. Even though it's one of my, it's not really all that long, long compared to some of my others. But it is definitely the heaviest. Okay, um, so we got that one. Let's do this one. And then we got the the set. Uh, yeah, it's easier if you just hand it to me in the scabbard. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, and this one is fairly heavy too, but it's not quite as heavy as the one we just had, but this one is fairly heavy too. Anyway, so it has like a interesting little... Yeah, because I didn't want to touch the blade. There, let me put this back in first. Well, anyway, I'll just show you the blade, I guess, first. Mm -hmm. I normally would start with the handle, but I'll show you the blade first. It's like a double-edged blade again. And it's got this nice long scabbard. It goes from there to there. And I'll go ahead and put it back in, and then I'll show you the handle. Okay. And see, it has this neat little design on it here. Like a little skull type thing almost. And then this part here. And it's got those things on the side and the horns there. And then I'll turn it around. And it looks pretty similar on the back. Matter of fact, it may be exactly the same. Yep. Anyway, so that's that sword. And, okay. So we already did the next uh, daddy. So it's just a set, and then my favorite one. And I'll have to get it by the bottom. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Oh, this sword messed it up. Yeah. You might have to make sure. Yeah, I'll fix it. Oh, uh, you might have to grab the phone and do an overhead view. Yeah, I will. Yeah, just a second. Let me get this fixed. All right. Okay. That way. There you go. Uh -huh. Now, some people put it on in the opposite direction, put the biggest one on the bottom, but I always put it, I always used to put the biggest one on the top. I don't know which way is correct, but that's the way I always did it. Because that's the way I've seen it in the movies. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Alright, I'm going to unclip you guys and show you the full view of it you'll get to see my tv and stuff as well but that is my sword set it's got the big katana at the top and then the tanto and then or well i can't remember which i can't remember which one is tanto and which one is Wak wakazushi one of them is the you get the long sword the short sword and then the dagger i forget the name i forget which one's which yeah, you can open it up and show the blade. Oh, and this one I need to re-glue the end pieces on the scabber and on the handle of some of them. So it kind of comes apart when you open it and stuff. But yeah, this is like oh, the blade looks like. Up. That's about to come off. Uh, can I try to realign that? Oh, okay. I see what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's... All right, where'd my cane go that I had this sitting on? Oh, I found it. I found how it's supposed to go. Okay. What happened to the cane? Oh, the cane? Yeah, I need the cane back. But my camera yeah, goes yeah, yeah. on. Yeah. Here. We need to go over the other blades, so. Well, I, I can do that with it. I'm back on the stand. Oh. I just wanted to show them the full view while it's on the stand, and now I'll go over the individual blades. Yeah. Whoop. I'm on it. Okay. Anyway, so I'll take these off and show them to you one at a time. Now that I've shown you what it looks like when it's all together. But yeah, this is the short, or the, the dagger. And it needs to be re-glued and stuff. But yeah, this was a, was a cheap uh, set when I bought it. Well, I mean, it, yeah, I paid it quite a bit for it, but it was cheaply made. I should rephrase that. And so it does not stay together real well. And see, there's the end piece from the end of the hilt on this short sword. That was what fell off. Anyway, so this is the short sword. And there's the blade on it. 
on 40 minutes. Yeah, this has gone a little bit longer than I intended. And then here is the... Yeah, I can get mm. it. Well, I'm just afraid of making the camera jump all over the place. Yeah, okay, the end of the scabbard is messed up on that one. That's why it's hard to open. Anyway, so this is the blade on the katana for this set. But they're all, all of the, uh, is all red and black in this set. So anyway, so that's, uh, that set. And I will let you take this off. And then I'll show them my favorite sword. One second, your zipper's messing up. I gotta do something. Oh, okay. Well, we can always zip it later. It don't have to be zipped right this second. Unless you're already planning on putting it back oh. there. Now, did we keep out all of them I was going to keep out? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we kept everything out. That we were there we doing. go. That's it. One zipper's just messed up. Okay, which one? Which one? That one? Well, we're going to take this down. And remember, this goes back in the bag. bag. That's why you didn't have to zip it yet. But... But those two swords you can put back there. Mm -hmm. And we'll have to take the stand apart and put it back in the bag too. Okay. But yeah, you can go ahead and hand it down. Oh. If you want to go and show that. What was that fell? Oh, the end the, 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 the of the scabbard. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, this is something else I have. I actually have two of these, but one of them I lost. And it's a little box knife that my dad got me. I haven't even opened, took the plastic off and opened it yet. But anyway, it just, it is something that to use. And then as you... When it gets dull, you just snap that piece off. It's got the little divisions in the blade there. So that as you go, you can just snap off the piece that is dull and then have a fresh dill to work with. Anyway, so that's just a little box knife that I wanted to show you real quick. And this stand just comes apart. You just slide these off like that. I wish I could set this up somewhere. And oh, just... yeah, I need to open this again. Yep. Yep. These pieces all go in there. Okay. All right. All right. And now this is my absolute favorite sword of my collection. And I will show you the scabbard and everything first. Oh, the dragon, the dragon on the end. And this is designed after the sword that uh, Christopher Lambert used in the movie Highlander. I don't know how many of you have seen that movie. But anyway, this was supposed to be a katana that he had made way back before they started. You haven't shown the head yet. Yeah, it's on the okay. camera. But anyway, it's got a, a nice dragon head and then there's a red jewel there and there. But yeah, this is made after... the in this design to be like the Highlander sword, which I, I kind of like that movie. And so I got this and this is my, one of my better made pieces, uh, at least for swords. I mean, some of the daggers are in really well made as well, but this is like my best made uh, sword. And so I really like it. And then of course it's got the deal there for Tying it to your waist. Is there anything else? And everything. And I think this is my last sword and stuff to show you. That is all of my collection that I currently know where it is. Oh, I was going to leave it there until I end the video. That way I don't have a, a blank thing while I'm talking at the end. Anyway, so I want to thank everyone for watching. And please like and subscribe. And if anybody has any questions about any of the knives or swords that I showed you today, uh, you can uh, ask me about them in the comments and I will reply as best 
some of the things I don't remember exactly where I got, but most, like I said, most of them I got at gun and knife shows years ago, back when I was still going to those before my health got bad so that I wasn't able to walk and walk around in them. Anyway, so, um, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I want to thank everyone for watching and I appreciate my assistant. I don't know if he wants to say bye or anything. Um, you can see his hand there. <laughs> anyway, um, and I will have a email or my email in the description down below in case somebody wants to contact me. And I will have my mailing address in the description down below in case you want to send me something. And I also would like to mention that when I reach 300 subscribers, I'm doing a giveaway. So if you know anybody that doesn't already have me as a channel, please let, uh, let them know about me. And I will be doing more coin videos and, of course, my lifestyle change videos. And mail calls and stuff in the future, as well as live streams. When I have uh, coins or, or, or uh, I might even do live stream just for chatting or whatever. Sometime in the future. Where you can do like a QA and a and ask me questions about various things. Anything you want to know about. And I will answer it the best I can. Anyway, so thank you for watching. And as always, everyone have a wonderful day. And be safe. Bye bye.